Hey everyone, welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be sharing my benchmarks as well as overclocking results of the Asus Ares 2. So here's the Ares 2 guys and this is pretty much the hotness right now when it comes to video cards. This is just about the fastest single video card, uh, albeit using two GPUs that you can currently purchase. This is a very limited run quantity of these that have been made so they're very difficult to attain to obtain, but uh, as you can see, two GPUs on here, they're both 7970 gigahertz edition GPUs, they're both on the other sides of those little sets of screws, and if you'd like to see an entire video going over this card in detail with some sexy close-up shots and all those, uh, you can find that on our new YouTube channel where I do an unboxing and overview of this card, as well as its included attached radiator with the closed loop liquid cooling system that they have set up here. Now I talked in that video several times about the performance of this card, the cooling of this card, how very impressed I was with it, and then the, the purpose of this video is to kind of uh, demonstrate that a little bit because I did run quite a few benchmarks. I uh, had this for a weekend, did as much with it as I could in the time allowed, and now I will be sharing that information with you. But uh, I wanted to give a, uh, some quick information on the test beds, the, tech, the other uh, hardware I was using, uh, as well as some of my testing methodology, uh, the numbers I'm sharing with you now, why I chose to share those specific numbers with you. Now this uh, is currently a test platform that I've been using for quite some time, uh, for 2012, a lot of it. This is a Z77 based motherboard, it's a Maximus 5 gene from ASUS. You'll notice my Trident X memory right there that runs at 2666 speed. Really overclocked memory and thanks to the uh, IMC in the uh, Ivy Ridge processor here, the 3570K, this mem memory can run very quickly. Now the 3570K, being Ivy Bridge, uh, does give you PCI Express Gen 3 support. However, you get basically 16 lanes uh, natively of PCI Express Gen 3 directly from the processor to support uh, your uh, PCI Express slots right here. Now, um, when we talk about the different hardware we're testing with, and some of, some of you might have already had this thought, but a 3570K costs, uh, I'll say, in the $200 range right now, a little bit above $200 right now. Uh, and this video card that we're talking about is, is many times more than that, or at least three times more, I would say. Three to four times? I don't know. Don't check my math. But um, th this seemed a little lopsided to me, and I plugged it in because I wanted to, to compare it against other cards I've tested on this platform, and I found that it performed quite well, but not quite up to the numbers I was hoping to achieve from it. So, I kind of decided, well, I'm going to need to set up something else for this. To that end, I also ran all my benchmarks with this processor. This is a 3960X, uh, not on this motherboard of course because this is a different platform, but I ran this on a socket 2011 uh, Gigabyte uh, X79SUP5 motherboard. Uh, so I did that in actually a couple different configurations because after connecting it to a 3960X which has 40 uh, PCI Express lanes that are Gen 3 compatible, although you do have to force it sometimes, uh, actually the AMD cards do play very nicely uh, with the 3960X and uh, the Gen 3 support uh, with the newest drivers, of course. So I tested this at stock frequency uh, for the, the CPU as well as the GPUs here. And then I also did some overclocking tests. So I overclocked the CPU uh, to about 4.5 gigahertz. I overclocked the GPU, actually both GPUs in here uh, to, wait, I need to double check my notes. All right, so here's my GPU Z printout of that. Uh, basically, GPU clock on this by default is 1100 megahertz, that's the boost clock. Uh, I've set it to 1225, so 125 megahertz overclock. Memory on this uh, usually runs at 1650, uh, and I bumped, bumped that up to 1800. So uh, those are my overclocks on this card. Uh, got that running up and uh, nice and stable. Got all my benchmarks set for that. So, you're gonna, so in the benchmarks coming up, you're going to see three sets of numbers for this card. You're going to see how it performs on a 3570K platform with a Z77 chipset. You're going to see how it performs on a 3960X. You're also going to see how it can perform when overclocked along with an overclocked processor. And I will say those numbers uh, to my eyes were quite impressive. And what is any good set of benchmarks without a basis for comparison? So this video card again has two uh, of the 7970 gigahertz edition processors. So I'm going to throw in one more of those uh, now bear in mind guys, this is a 7970 standard, not gigahertz edition. Um, I, I'm not going to be showing results for this uh, because it's clocked a little bit lower, uh, but I am going to be showing results for the HIS 7970 gigahertz edition. Uh, so this one is running at the stock, so to speak, uh, frequencies of the gigahertz edition, which is 1000 uh, megahertz or 1050 uh, for the boost clock. Uh, and uh, so you'll see those numbers in there side by side. I'm also going to show you cooling numbers uh, for the HIS7970. Um, and then finally, 
I'm also going to be showing you a bit of the competition right here. So this is a GTX 680. This is a reference design GTX 680 uh, by EVGA. Uh, bear in mind also that this is running at stock speeds. I did not overclock this or anything. Uh, so the other two sets of numbers you're going to see are the 680 here as well as the 7970 gigahertz edition here. And again, both of those are going to be running on uh, this platform here, the 3570K processor and the Z77 platform. So hopefully that gives you guys uh, a good idea of the different configurations that I ran these benchmarks in. Next up, we're going to take a look uh, at some charts comparing the various numbers of these uh, video cards side by side, as well as the uh, hardware platforms that I tested them on. And then finally, we'll roll right into our benchmarks. <laughs> So those are the benchmarks, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, it took me a while to put those together, but uh, what can we learn from all of this? Well, firstly, uh, the main thing I wanted to point out is if you're going to go with a high-end video card like the, uh, the Aries 2 right here, or if you're going to go for a 7970, uh, especially if you're going for a gigahertz edition, and even more so if you're going to be going for a high-end graphics card configuration such as a Crossfire X or SLI setup, um, this being Crossfire X in one card, uh, you definitely want to lean towards a higher end platform. Now one thing I don't have are tests with the 3770K rather than, than a 3570K. I was curious what that would lead to, but unfortunately I ran out of time so I couldn't rerun all the tests in that configuration. But I wanted to point out a few things that I, I noted. Uh, first off, power draw for the Ares 2 uh, on the 3570K was 670 watts peak. Peak power draw, but please bear in mind, uh, 712 watts uh, on the 3960X uh, running at stock, up to 870 watts when overclocked, and that's with the CPU as well as the GPU overclocked, so both of those were drawing more power, and that's why um, in the video for this I recommend, if you're going for a high-end system, actually go over the 850 watts recommended by ASUS for this video card. Also temperature-wise, 60 degrees Celsius. Now, please bear in mind when you're looking at the temperatures in my tests right now, um, they're there for reference, and I wouldn't see them as a, like a hard line thing because what I need to do is be testing them as a delta versus the ambient temperature, which I'm not currently uh, doing right now simply because I don't have a really good thermometer to test the ambient temperature. I'm gonna be including that in the future, um, but uh, they're, they're, so they're slightly subjective, but 60 degrees Celsius was the hottest that uh, the GPU got on the Ares 2, uh, that's at stock frequency, with the overclock on it, just got up to 64, and that's like chilly for a high-end GPU like that, especially under full load. Uh, the Ice QX2 here, uh, by comparison, uh, max it got up to a 71 degrees Celsius, which is still very, very cool um, for a high-end GPU like this. Um, I do want to point out that the Ice QX2, when I measured the 71 degrees Celsius temperature, uh, was towards the end of a benchmarking session when I know it had gotten a bit warmer, and usually the temps here were ranging in the mid to upper 60s. Finally, our GTX 680 here uh, with its reference design cooler. Uh, max temp we saw on this was 70, 77 degrees Celsius. Uh, now I want to point out again, reference design cooler, so this isn't taking advantage of any of the uh, aftermarket designs that either the Ares 2 or the HIS uh, Ice QX2 
are taking advantage of. Uh, and also bear in mind that uh, we're running this at uh, stock frequencies, although it can make use of the boost clock. And the 680 still hung in there just fine, uh, even with these other two cards being overclocked as they are. So uh, there's sort of your uh, general rundown of the benchmark comparisons. Hopefully that kind of gives you a better idea of where each of these cards sits in the layout of the current hierarchy of video cards that are out there and available. But that is going to wrap it up for this video. So uh, once again, this has been my benchmark uh, comparison and overclocking demonstration, or at least my results of the overclocking demonstration uh, with the ASUS Aries 2. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.